Welcome back to the channel. If you guys are new here, hey, it's your girl Lucy, and today, guys, whoa, I'm for once not in front of my computer screen. That's because today we're actually doing a more IRL sort of storytelling sort of video. Today's video is kind of spooky, so be sure to smash the like if you guys are new to the channel. Be sure to hit the subscribe button to join the family today, especially so you guys don't miss out on future content. But guys, for today's video, I ended up going back to the world's most haunted museum again. Have I ever been into my haunted museum by myself? The answer is no, because I do not go into my haunted museum by myself because I'm too terrified. Two days ago, I went to Zach Begin's haunted museum. I refused to look at the Vivid box, but accidentally did. Now I'm in the hospital. The very first thing they have us do is sign a waiver. They basically said they're not responsible for us fainting, getting bloody noses, dying. <laughs> Yes, you heard me. I went before, actually two other times before. One time I made a video on it, the other time I actually didn't make a video on it, but I went with my best friend and we had a lot of fun there, nothing too crazy happened. And then I just went back for the third time just the other day and it was insane. So let me catch you guys up and tell you guys about this place, just in case you guys are confused or maybe you've never heard about what this place is. Let me explain it. So basically Zach Bagans is from Ghost Adventures, if you guys have ever seen it, and he has collected a, a huge collection of paranormal items that are either cursed, allegedly haunted, things that had to do with murder cases, possessions, really horrible items, pretty much anything just horrifying. And he has confiscated it into this museum that he actually purchased, which was once a mansion. So it's this big, huge mansion on the end of the street of Vegas. Um, and the mansion that he actually purchased to display all the items for uh, actually has a really dark occult history to it. Apparently he bought it from a girl who was warning him not to buy it and saying that the basement of this place was like the epicenter of evil. Um, I remember one time I went into the basement and I never went back down since then I still don't plan on going back down there. It was horrible um, The energy in this place was crazy as you walk along in there. There's rooms with like dolls I know specifically there was like one closet full of just all haunted dolls ones that have been possessed Ones that have seen like been talking and caused horrible things to happen in households I went into the waiting lobby and I actually filmed some of the stuff on the display area because you can film in this room But not the rest of the museum. I really really wished I could have filmed some of the stuff inside there but I can see why because it would take the experience away and this is definitely a place you guys would want to check out yourself before I spoil anything too crazy on the inside I'm going to tell you about these items and a few things that happened to me along my journey of this place but it's um some crazy crazy stuff um so yeah as you can see here in this club I am inside of the waiting lobby which had some scary cursed looking dolls outside of it the first cursed item that I really really want to bring up in this video that always makes me feel uneasy that I never even had the courage to step into the room of is a haunted doll that I might have covered in a few videos before called Peggy. So Peggy the haunted doll has a very dark, gruesome backstory to her. Um, every time I go to the museum and I have the option of going into the room to see Peggy, I just feel like there's something telling me not to go inside of that room. And I do most of the rooms. This room, I can feel the energy outside of the door. Like something just feels off. Like. I feel like I'm dizzy outside of the door. I feel just heavy energy. I feel a little horrified to go into that room because they tell you if you want to enter the room with this Peggy doll that's cursed, that you do have to say hello and goodbye just like the same way you'd use in a Ouija board. I, for one, will not do that. And what's inside of this doll does not seem to be the soul of a little girl. It seems to be the soul of a demon. So let me explain the backstory of Peggy the doll just a little bit for you guys so you guys can understand where I'm coming from with this. Peggy was given to a paranormal investigator by her terrified former owner. The doll is believed to be haunted and trigger migraines and chest pains, nosebleeds, and even car accidents and have been set upon the bad juju that this doll brings to people. And psychics actually speculate that she is Jewish and possibly a Holocaust victim, even though we all know that there is something pretending to be a little girl from some past event inside of this doll. Also, another really creepy legend about this doll is that this doll was so bad back in the days when they first put pictures and videos of this doll online. Many people suffered similar symptoms from just looking at the doll. Like I said, the nosebleeds, the heart attack. Actually, one woman did look at her online and had a heart attack immediately after staring at a photo of Peggy. And just all these other really crazy bad things that have happened from just looking at a simple photo of her just like this one here on the screen. So be careful, kids. 
um, but I just felt very heavily affected outside of the actual room of the physical doll. Um, another thing I want to put out is that it looks like this in her cage, which I might have shown on the screen already, or her little pin that she's contained in. There's a bunch of creepy dolls around her, and she is wearing like a cross necklace to protect whatever she has inside of her. And they do have a spear box running 24-7 in her room where she resides where guests can ask her questions like Peggy how are you and how old are you when they tried to say hi Peggy it would say get out in like an evil demonic voice one lady even claims that when she opened a photograph of Peggy on her computer that her computer froze on the picture and the entire room she was in went cold she then said she felt someone in the room with her and could hear them moving around there's just so many horrible things online if you guys want to look it up and take time to go more in depth about this doll I just advise you to be careful because the in-depth history of Peggy the doll cursing people and having effects through a computer screen is insane. The next creepy doll experience I had at Zach Bagans Museum was a doll named Lily. So Lily, I believe, has a also pretty dark backstory to her and a scary look all around. If you guys take a look at Lily the doll here, I will put her on the screen. You will notice her hair is particularly pretty realistic looking and that's funny because she does have real human hair atop of her head. So Lily the doll actually came from Salem, Oregon. She was actually inside of an antique shop where she was causing some mischief before Zach purchased her and put her in the museum. The antique dealer said that he had began having reoccurring nightmares about a little girl who had a very bad accident once he got the Lily doll in his shop. He even claims that the details of the nightmares he was having were too disturbing to tell to people. He then put the doll in his antique shop where a little girl came in with her parents and spoke to Lily for three hours straight, catching the attention of everyone in the store. The little girl was speaking to her as if Lily the doll were a real child and then told the staff working at the antique shop that Lily is a little girl that was subjected to extreme violence, which is horrifying because the people at the shop didn't even tell the little girl that Lily had any sort of weird stuff going on or attachment to anything like haunted. They just kept her there in hopes to sell her but that little girl had the experience with the doll on her own. Then when Zach finally acquired Lily, an older woman as seen in the photo had to physically touch Lily to get her down from where she was perched high inside of the case. At the time, the older woman looked flush and began to panic. She repeated over and over, I must wash my hands, I must wash my hands, I must wash my hands. She was then immobilized as she began to have sharp pains inside of her stomach. Zach felt immense energy the moment he saw the doll and he just knew he had to get it for his collection. But now at the museum, there are a few guests that come inside and say that they feel affected and very sad when they look at Lily the doll due to some very dark connection or backstory tied with this doll. Who knows? the full and detailed backstory really truly is or if whatever is inside of this doll is not just a child but yet a demon once again. So another item I really want to bring up and talk about that I didn't talk about I don't think before maybe slightly mentioned is that this museum has the actual devil's rocking chair. This was featured in the Conjuring movies The Devil Made Me Do It and the story behind this chair is horrifying. I'm sure that maybe a lot of you guys have heard of this but I did come right up close like feet away from the real devil rocking chair and I never really got affected by this item when I went through the museum. Honestly I'm pretty shocked because all the stories online about this thing are horrifying but I never felt like any weird energy but I do want to share what the dark backstory of this chair is because a lot of people that go through the museum they opposite and say that they do feel affected by this item. So the devil's rocking chair was actually infamous for being connected to Ed and Lorraine Warren which are very famous paranormal investigators. I'm sure you guys know about that and scary enough I believe that it is true that the day that Zach Zach Biggins got the chair from Lorraine Warren was the same day that she sadly ended up passing on, which is very, very strange and suspicious timing. Actually, this chair was kind of putting off some very bad energy onto guests in the museum for a while. That a few years ago, Zach Biggins actually chose to close down that exhibit after a group of guests experienced horrible traumatic events after looking at the chair. And not only did the guests experience these effects, but he did as well in his own home. Because of the disturbing reactions of the chair. Six people all shared the same disturbing uncontrollable crying, one of them being a guest who also collapsed directly above the devil's rocking chair on the stairs. Bacon's clarified that the chair is housed directly under the set of stairs in the house that he built the museum. I'm so surprised that after those events happened that he still decided to leave the chair in the museum or even be around it himself because if I was him, I would be freaked out. But needless to say, I walked right past that chair and I did not have any effect, thank goodness. The only thing, and I'm going to leave this for the very end of the video, which is 
now that has affected me each and every time that I've been through this really, really creepy curse museum was this one room called the Demon House. Every time that I've been through this, which the three times I've gone to this museum, um, I felt the exact same way standing in this little room. So the Demon House was a house where terrible things happened, of course, as we could assume. People were possessed by demons and there was one kid who even walked straight up a wall. Basically, I think it's related, like I said, to occult stuff and evil, terrible things. Anyway, short story short, so I don't go too far in depth with this one. They tore down the house where all this evil stuff was taking place and they bulldozed it down and they took the soil from under the ground of the house, some of the bricks and the stairwell and they rebuilt the house, the actual pieces of this possessed place and they made like a little display of it in the museum and every single time when I'm standing in that room I nearly just like I start swaying and I feel like I can't control my body and it's super horrifying like I get dizzy I feel like I can't breathe like something's trying to get me to stop breathing this last time I literally didn't even want to look at the display because I felt so uneasy and sick that I literally just stepped out of the room early I did not want to look at the display I looked at it the last two times this time I couldn't do it I something was making me not want to be there and that actually was kind of coincidental because two other people in the same tour as me had the same exact reaction to the same exact thing another girl in there was saying I can't do it I can't do it and she just looked down refused to look at the display and we never had this problem the whole tour until now and same with this girl she never walked out of anything she even did peg and the divic box which is like the world's most haunted item and in this room she felt the same exact way that I did I was like do you feel dizzy she's like yeah like something can't like let you breathe and I was like same and we both were horrified that we had that same experience and then I told her that the other two times that I was there at the museum I had the same exact feelings and reactions and the last two other times I was thinking maybe because I was wearing a mask like I was just dizzy or you know air wasn't circulating but no I'm not crazy because other people experience the same thing but guys all in all this museum I think is a great visit if you guys are brave enough and um, willing enough to see some of the world's most cursed items it never fails to amaze me. I just can't even explain the feeling of walking through that house. The energy is heavy. You could definitely tell that it's real. Like if you're a skeptic, if you don't believe in ghosts or you think it's fake, I wouldn't recommend you go there and mess around and mock the items because good chances will be that you get cursed or something happens. So definitely if you guys don't believe in ghosts, if you guys want to go check out that place because it will change your entire opinion. Anyways guys, that's gonna do it for today's story time. I hope you guys enjoyed today's video and hopefully learned something spooky or had a good scare. Um, I definitely do, like I said, recommend you guys check out the museum if you guys want to see some scary stuff. If you guys ever go to Vegas, definitely give it a check out. And I will see you guys all in the next video. Thank you all so much for watching. Be sure to subscribe button if you guys enjoyed and drop a like and leave a comment down below. Let me know, do you guys believe in ghosts? Yes or no? It's been Lizzie. I'll see you guys in the next video and until next time, peace out. Bye.